so that's a good way to look at it. Because a lot of times what we see with the physical eye is nothing but treachery and trickery. But when we see with our heart, we see pure. We see what is whole. We can see the truth. That's what God sees. He looks at the hearts. See, this is why he says in John 14, 15, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. See, because we lie a lot. Amen. We say a lot of things. We don't really mean it. But when he looks at our hearts, he sees the truth. He sees who we are. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is So he sees the source. That's what the song was requesting. That we are able to see God that same way. And when we see God the way he sees us, we will reciprocate in that unconditional love that Amen. He has for us. Yes. You can't help but to love you once you know him. Praise God for Jesus. I'm going to go ahead and start this morning from the book of 2 Timothy and chapter 4, moving down to verse 7. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Now I think Paul is speaking here of his evangelistic ministry record. Not taking anything away from the pastoral ministry because that was part of his ministry also to plant churches and, and uh, select pastors to preside over those churches. But Paul understood and he knew the importance of spreading the word so his message was to the world. You know, as, as all hands on deck, as Jesus said when he was leaving, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. See, when Jesus said, he wasn't only talking to the clergy, he was speaking to everybody. Amen. So, Paul has come back and he's making the same thing there. But did you notice how he says that everything is in past tense? How he fought, how he finished, and how he kept. So, we all have to start somewhere, but it's how we finish is what he's looking at. Amen. How we finish. He fought. He kept. And he finished. So we all have to start somewhere. And we all start bumpy and rough, but we are to finish well. That is our, our goal, Amen. to finish well. Yes. That is where it counts, when we finish well. And you know what they say, you got to start somewhere. And you say, who are they? Well, they are them that say, you know. They, they, say, they say that today is the first day of the rest of your life. So there's no better time to start than right now. Right. And when you start, then prepare to finish well. This is what Paul is, is pointing out to Timothy. This is the message that he wants to give to us. And he says here that those who stay in it for the long haul will receive that special crown of righteousness. And that special crown of righteousness is for those who have faithfully served. Amen. They will be the ones who love his appearance. You see, those who faithfully serve will love his appearance because the bad guy, he don't want to see him anyway. <laughs> he he didn't at all. So we have to now figure out, have we started? And if not, why not? And if we're going to, we. But there's no better time than now. Because what you do today will dictate where you are tomorrow. Yes. So we need to start. And when we start, Set a goal to finish well. This is what Paul wants us to do. To finish well. Yes. And we have this idea 
in our hearts and in my, our minds that we are there already, you know, because as Paul is speaking here, he's just saying that people will come to the to the table and say they're already there, you know, like most of us will say, you know, yeah, I'm Christian, I follow Christ, I'm, I'm a solid Christian. But are we? Where are we in our follow Christ? We have to stop and forget. Or are we fighting the good fight? Or are we in the battle? Or are we conscientious objectors? Yes. See, because some people will start the war. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And then when the enemy comes against them, they fold. They fold. They fold. Oh no, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> and they start moving around trying to look for that neutral corner. But no, you have to be engaged and actually fight. Yes. This is what he said. You have to be engaged and actually fight Amen. the battle. And some people just want to fight. That's, that's their whole purpose. They don't care what the cause is. Let's just fight. <laughs> they come into a perfectly calm situation and start a fight. <laughs> because they want to fight. But you have to understand, God only rewards the good fight. Good fight. This is what he, said. he only rewards the good fight. We look at Jesus as the standard bearer, and Jesus came as a conquering king without ever firing a shot. Yes. Because the good fight puts down insurrection. Yes. Gives his enemy a drink of water when he's thirsty. Yes. He'll pray for the guy who comes against him. Yes. He will think and then forgive the people who persecutes and oppresses him. The good fight is all about love and compassion. Yes, it is. The good fight is about changing hearts and minds, standing against evil and spreading good. Yes. That's the good fight. The good fight is preaching Jesus Christ yes. against all odds. Yes. yes. That is spiritual yes. warfare. Yes. And how are we doing? How are we doing? Where are we in that game, in that battle? How are we doing in our course, on our race? Have we entered the race? Are we on our course or is we on the sideline? Cheering the runners as they pass by. Hey, hey, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm on your team. Go, oh, we got it. No, you're not. You're not on it. If you were on the team, you'd be in the race on your course. Yes. Because everybody has to run the race to finish the course. And you must finish. So you must run. You can't take credit for what your mama and grandmama did. You have to race. And every race has rules. From the sound of the gun, you are confined to the rules of the course. And you can't take no shortcuts. It's got a finish line, and there's a starting line. There. And you have to stay within the perimeters of the course. Yes. And follow the rules. And you know what the rules of the course is. The rules of the course is you can't go around <laughs> lying and stealing, <laughs> committing adultery and killing. And when you don't do the things that are not against the rules, then you show your love for God. Amen. Remember, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Yes. Right. When you follow the rules, you show your love for God. Yes. The, the, the race also gives you a crown. And everyone gets a crown. And you don't have to be better than anybody That's else. Right. You don't have to compete with anybody. Right. And you don't have to outrun the rest of the runs. All you have to do is run your race and finish. Amen. Yes. But the deal is to finish well. Yes. Yes. Just finish well. Yes. See, you are not obligated to pass up a lot of people or, or to point out to other people right. their shortcomings or how slow they are or, or, or where they fell off the track. You just run your race. Amen. Amen. And stay on course. And when you finish, then you will be asked the question. And the question would be, did you keep the faith? Yes. 
Did you keep the faith throughout the war and throughout your race? Did you keep the faith? But you got to understand one thing, that you got to have the faith in order to keep the faith. If you don't have the faith, you can't keep it because you don't got it. you got to get it before you can keep it. Like the old preacher said, the only way the shout can come out is as if it was the dead. It's got to be in there to come out. So if you don't have it, you can't keep it. And everybody said, oh, well, yeah, I got faith. I got faith. And I agree. We all have faith because Jesus said that we all was given a measure of faith. But have we went past that common faith? Have we went past that common faith where you open your closet door and all your clothes are still there? Oh, yeah, I knew they'd be there. <laughs> you flick the light switch on and off and it works. We're talking about venturing into the spiritual or the biblical definition of faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You ever been there? Yeah. We're talking yes. about calling those things that are not as though they were. Yes. Looking for your needs just because you know that there is a promise that God says, I will supply all of your Amen. needs yeah. through this yeah. region. Yeah. So you're looking for them because you know that you believe that. This is what I'm talking about. And when you operate in that kind of faith, it will enhance your ability in the war. Yes, yes. It, will. it will greatly improve your ability to run your race. Yes. Amen. But you have to have that kind of faith. That kind of faith you can't have in a neutral corner. You're in the corner trying to figure out. Who. You have to get out of that corner yes, and do. choose the side. Yes, yes. Get out of the corner and choose the side. Yes. Whether well, it's the right side or the wrong side, you got to be someone. Yes. You remember what Jesus said about the uh, Laodicean church? He said they were neither hot nor cold. So he spewed them out of his mouth because they were lukewarm. Didn't have no need for them. Didn't want it. So you can't be in a neutral corner and then claim that you fought the good fight or that you're operating in the faith of God. You have to choose side yes. and step out in that faith. All right? You can't show your faith standing on the sideline. Jerry, you got to be in the race because if you're on the sideline, People passing by, they may hear one or two words of what you say, but the rest of it, they're going to miss because they move. Yep. So if you really want to be in it, you got to get out there and run with them so you can chat while you run. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Yes. Faith without works is dead. Yes. And you have to operate and step out in the faith in order to see. Yes, you do. Faith is good when you use it. I'm thinking about the uh, book of Mark in chapter 2. The faith that the men had. It says that when Jesus came back to Capernaum, after he'd been out on the road for a while, all of the people heard he was back in town. So they came to, to hear him. It said the house was full. The house was packed. Couldn't sit down or stand up. You just had to sit in there. God. And here comes the four. And I, I've talked about these four men, and everybody I've heard talk about these four men. We all say these four friends, and the guy on the stretcher who the four men was carrying was their friend. But the Bible never said that. The Bible never said that, and I got a new perspective on it. The last time I read it, it says that the four came bearing one on a stretcher. Hmm. And it put me in a frame of mind of, of war. If you've watched a, a war movie or, or seen those kind of movies, you see that when a man is out in the open and he's going somewhere or doing something in the battlefield and he gets shot, he goes down, the first thing he says, Medic! And the medic, he's already taking cover. He's hiding behind trees or rocks or wherever he is. And the guy's hollering, Medic! 
So he comes up and assesses the situation. And if it's safe, he and another guy goes out with a stretcher, put the guy on the stretcher, and they take him back to safety and start to try to work on him. That's the way it worked. And I'm looking at these four guys who have carried the man on the stretcher. Jesus came back to town. Everybody heard he was back and rushed over to the house and left the paralyzed man there. He can't go because he can't move. So here come these four guys going to see Jesus also and they pick him up and bring him along because they figured out that if he could go see Jesus too, he would be healed. He may get well. Amen. But it says that when they got there, the place was full and there was no way in there. People everywhere. So they went up on the roof and took the roof off and let the man down right in Jesus' face. Can't miss him now. And it says that when Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus saw their faith. And I just gave you the biblical definition of faith and it says... The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You can't see faith in other words. You can't see faith. So what did Jesus see? When Jesus saw their faith. What did Jesus see? Let me tell you what he saw. He saw those four men make a way out of no way. Yes. He saw those four men continue when everybody else was stopped by the circumstances or the situation, these four kept going. You see what it said? He saw the substance. He saw the things that they did because they had faith. It didn't matter whether they were the guy's friends and cousins or whatever he was. They had brought him there. And maybe they didn't want to take him back. Or maybe they didn't care whether they had to take him back or not. But they wanted him to be able to see Jesus because they knew that if he did see Jesus, then he wouldn't have to be taken back. He could go back by himself. Yes. Yes. That's what Jesus saw. Yes. Faith. faith. The unmovable faith. Yes. Faith that causes you to go beyond the normal circumstances. Yes. That when everybody else see a situation or a condition and find it impossible, you challenge it anyway. You see, because it says in, in Mark again, it says in 20, Mark 11, 23 and 24, that if you say to a mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and believe in your heart, that what you say is true, that that mountain will be removed. Amen. That is an impossibility. And he puts that there to let you know that with God, all things are possible. Amen. You can do the impossible. And with faith, again, you can call those things that are not although, as though they were. Amen. And when you do that in public, somebody's going to call you a nut. <laughs> But you don't care because you know what you know. And you know that through God, you can move a mountain into the sea. But you can't do that if you're in that neutral corner. If you're in a neutral corner, you don't have any power. On either side because you're neither hot nor cold. You're not for one or the other. The devil don't even need you. You can't promote his goals. You have to be someone. Either you believe or you don't believe. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. He stayed in the fight until it was over. It's finished. I have fought the good fight. The fight's over. He didn't say whether well, he won or not. He just said he fought. Well, did the guy beat you up? Oh, did you beat him up? I fought the good fight. That's all that's necessary. And he says, I finished the course. How many people did you outrun, Paul? How many people did you beat to the finish line? I don't know. I don't care. I finished the course. That's where you are in your walk with Christ. It doesn't matter the people you touch. What matters is, how did you finish? 
the four men carrying the man on the on the stretcher. They touched the light. You see, many people will be saved because of some of us. And many people will not be saved because of some of us. <laughs> but we are to go forth and preach the gospel against all odds. The person who walks up and says he doesn't believe in God. What do you do? Well, that's your opinion, sir. But you wouldn't be here without him. <laughs> and then let him figure it out. It didn't say that we have to argue and win or beat people over the head and make them receive. We're just supposed to give what we have. Freely we receive, so freely we give. And that's all we are required to do. We are to run our race, stay on the course, and finish the run. And when it's over, the question, did you keep the faith? Paul thought that he was successful in all three of those categories that he built his life work around. War, athletics, and religion. You know, fighting, running, and keeping the faith. He built his life around those three conditions or positions. And he thought he was successful in all of them because he is now expecting a crime. And it's laid up for me a crown. And there will be as many crowns as there are finishers. Which means you don't have to outdo anybody. You don't have to be better than anybody else. Just go and finish. And you get the same crown Paul did. The crown of righteousness because of your faithful service. Amen. Yes. Yes. So where are we and how are we standing in the grand scheme of things? You see, we know and he knows. The rest of us, I got y'all fooled. <laughs> oh, I could have. Been. I have you don't really know in other words. Amen. You know what you see. And oh, it looks good. It looks good. It looks like he really does the Lord. But where is he in the fight? When the fight starts, where is he? Does he go to the neutral corner? Come on, get it, get it. Oh, this guy's winning now. Okay, get it, get it. <laughs> or has he chose the side? And we stand with Christ Jesus yes. no matter what. Yes. Against all odds, we are standing with what Jesus said. And I don't care what the rest of y'all do. I'm going with Jesus. Well, I'm not going with Jesus because blood is sticking in water. And this is my sister. Fine. You and your sister go on over there. I'm going to get over here with Jesus. <laughs> I'm saying that we have to choose a side. And the time has come. We are talking about Paul and Timothy and what Paul told Timothy. That perilous times was coming. And yes. now we see the perilous times. Yes. To, to come up front and write personal present. We just had a terrible week. We just had a terrible week. Where we all sit and if we watched any news at all, we saw where all these little children was killed. For no apparent reason. The enemy is working overtime yes. because he knows the time is near. Yes. He knows he doesn't have much time left before it's going to all come down around his ears. And he's going to be put where he belongs. So he's working over that. We now have to gear up. We now have to gear up. So we have to come to, to battle with everything we have because it is a spiritual battle. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against powers and principalities, yes. Yes. wickedness in high places. And this is what he's talking about. Jesus came as a conquering king and never struck no one, never shot no one, never cursed out anyone. He came with love and compassion. Love and compassion. Yes. Forgiving those who persecuted and oppressed 
turning the other cheek. These things we find hard to do because, I mean, sometimes we get really excited and, and uh, build way up if a person don't look at us the way we think he should. <laughs> Did you see the way he looked at me? <laughs> Did you see the way he looked at me? Amen. Oh, what's wrong with you? I might have to dress him up. in the grand scheme of things. See, and when you violate one of the rules of the race, you have to go back and start over. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. That is a privilege to go back and start over. It's a privilege. And it's a good thing because you get to start all over and everything that you've ever done before is wiped away and you get a new start. Plus the fact, again, you're not competing with anybody. So you have to finish at your own speed. But we must, again, understand our position in Christ. Not of ourselves, but our position in Christ. We just had some says, through it all, he took the fall. For us, Jesus came and died so that we might live. And we are supposed to live a life of more abundance. He doesn't want us to be sad, sorry, and broken hearted. He wants us to be happy. Yes. yes. He wants yes. us to enjoy Joy. what he's given us. Yes. Hallelujah. That's our goal. Finish well. Were we finishing with a smile on our face? Please with what God has done for us. Yes. We've all been in dire straits. We've all been in trouble. We've all been hurt. We've all been broken. But we came back. Yes, we thank you. That's His promise. He sent His Word to heal us. And by His stripes, we were healed. And it not means that you've got to be sick to be healed if you're broke. He'll give you own finances here or there. If you got a problem with your family, he'll straighten that out if you let it. But you have to be part of it. You have to be running the course. You can't just stand back and say, well, God's going to do it. Faith is the substance of things. So you have to step out. But you must trust the Lord. And let Him take control. There's a saying that go on again, they say. Uh, what is it? Let go and let God? Yes. yes. Go for right along. Mm -hmm. Cast him your cares on him so he care for you. Mm -hmm. So you let it go and give it to him. Mm -hmm. And then don't be, don't be ashamed to say when the, when the subject comes back up again, don't talk to me about that. Talk to my attorney. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Jesus is handling that. Jesus. Because you don't want nothing to do with it. You couldn't fix it the first time. So you're not going to handle it the second time. Give it to God and let Him have it. Yes. He said that He would take care of it. So trust in the Lord. Fight the good fight. Run a good race. But get faith. You can't claim that you kept it if you never had it. Get faith. And then operate in that faith and your race will be better and your war will be better. Yes. And you will stand a better chance of finishing well. Amen? Yes. Amen. Fight the good fight. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. Not anybody else's my course. I have kept the faith. Therefore, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which is which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearance. Thank you. You're glad to see people when they come in with something. You don't want to see them if you've been bad and they're going to discipline you. But if you've been good, you want to see them. He 
says that you got to love the appearance. And all of those that love his appearance are those who faithfully serve and believe in Christ. That's who we are. So we waiting patiently for his return. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you give us these road maps, that you give us these promises, that you give us these things to make our lives better, that we might make this journey through this world, Father, peaceably, with love and joy and happiness, giving us an opportunity, Father, to share what we have with others. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come together with people of like mind and to just rekindle our, our faith and to, to build up our faith and just to fellowship and be at peace knowing that we are all on our card. We thank you again, Father, for all the things that you've done for us in the past. We thank you for what you're doing for us right now. But we look forward, Father, for those things that you're going to do in the future. For you told us in your word that our eyes have not seen, nor could our minds imagine what you have in store for us. So we wait patiently, Father, for your return. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.